Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's look at three effects in Caden Live that are super useful that you probably didn't know about. If you're not familiar with Caden Live, it is a fantastic free open source video editor that you can get. I'll put a link in the description below. Go check it out. First, super useful effect. Under the alpha mask and keying section, there is this alpha gradient effect that helps you to graduate a transition between the two. It would be useful in the case of where you're trying to blend two things together. Now, the first control here, and by the way, all of these are keyframeable, so you can adjust this or make it shift your, your condition. The position will play with where the middle of the fade point is, if that makes sense. You can see as I drive that, how it starts to move. Um, that's one of the mechanisms you can use for when you animate this or make your keyframes but that's what the position is the transition width is kind of like feathering it's how stretched out how drawn out the gradient is and when i say gradient it's really not between colors it's between whatever that object is and transparency moving to the thing underneath it all right that's that's really the the um the gradient in effect so you can see that transition width changing how dense that is over the long stretch of it. Tilt will actually change the angle of the gradient. So if it doesn't fit, if you wanted it to line up with a different edge or you wanted it to be diagonal or horizontal, you have all those choices based on the tilt control. Minimum would be the uh, amount of starting a gradient, they made a starting transparency really. So that can be started wherever you want. Again, they're keyframeable, so you can start it wherever it makes sense, even at zero and then bring it in. Uh, same thing with max, where this is your maximum, the most of it uh, that would be starting out, or at least for that keyframe, the most that is graduated uh, using the gradient. It's a really slick tool if used stylistically, and I wanted to point that out because you can use it on really any object that has a visual aspect on images and on video and the animation files that you bring in. A creative use of the D fish effect. This is typically thought to apply to pictures or images or things that have a bend to them because of the wide angle. It's a distortion you're correcting, but you can use D-Fish for something a little bit creative. I don't know if it was intended this way, but it works and I wanted to point it out as something you can do. So under the Transform, Distort, and Perspective section under Effects, there is this D-Fish, and I'm going to drag that on over here. And what you can do with this is you have the traditional correction, but if you play with some of the settings here, if we were to change this setting down here, the aspect type to HDV, that's important. And then scroll down a little bit more here. I'm just gonna pick our opening keyframe. What starts to happen is that as you increase the amount, it almost creates this warp effect which is really kind of interesting, especially when you keyframe it and then start to play with it as, as a transition kind. Uh, so if I were to take this and create a keyframe later on that backs off all of that, you can effectively do a zoom transition effect. You could fill in or create movement and energy in your cuts and takes using this just with this inverse effect. This one really is geared towards your editing and workflow process, but it's useful nonetheless. And under generate, it is the dynamic text. I'm just gonna drag that in over here. And what this does, you may already know this, that it's appending some information in the upper left-hand corner. It can be hard to see, um, but it's giving you some information about the clip. I'm just gonna change the color of this so it's just a bit easier for us to see here. There. So right now it's bringing in the time code, but you really can bring in most of the metadata of the clip you're working with. And the place this might be most useful are things like the date of the file. I'm going to take out time code because we don't need that. But that can help you keep track of when the shot was taken. And if you're working on a long-term project and you need to refer to specific footage at a specific day, uh, it can help you keep track of your cuts. This is a way you can do it and it doesn't have to be rendered in the final project. This is dynamically applied and you can turn it off with the controls of the effects at any time. All right, so those are three 
Caden Live effects that are super useful that you probably didn't know about. I hope that was helpful. If it was, please do give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment, ask a question, and I will see you again at the next video. Thank you so much for your support and for keeping up with this channel. I appreciate it so much. I love y'all. See you next time. <laughs>